Hey nerds, I'm Chris, and I'm here to help you get beautiful recordings. Now, the first step to getting a beautiful recording is having a good audio interface. Recently, I did a whole bunch of testing of different audio interfaces, tested their noise floors, their features, and I standardized the testing so that they're all on the same level, and we'll go over some of their strengths and weaknesses as well, so that you could get a good idea of which one is best for your specific needs. One of the first things I want to mention with this video is it is not sponsored. I have no affiliation with any of these audio interfaces. I have used these interfaces, I've tested them, and I'm just giving my honest review of them. So there's a wide variety of audio interfaces with different features, different sound quality, and different prices. So in my testing, I rated them for those three categories. Now, in my opinion, the single most important part of an audio interface is its sound quality, and the most important component for its sound quality is the preamps. So I did extensive testing of the preamps of these, and I also tested a whole bunch of external standalone preamps. So we're gonna see how these internal preamps compare to external standalone preamps. And I'll give you a small spoiler alert here. The more expensive ones aren't necessarily the best sounding ones. So the highest scoring audio interface for value was the Behringer UMC 204 HD. The Behringer UMC 204 HD measured a preamp noise floor of 6.25. This falls within the category of high quality professional preamps and outperformed several standalone preamps such as the Capi VP28, Art Pro MPA2, and the FMR RNP. For features, it scored a 2, which is below average because it's just a very basic recording interface. This is tied with the Focusrite Scarlett and Steinberg UR22C, although it scored lower than the SSL2 or Volt series interfaces. And for value, it scored a 12.9. This is the highest value score of all the interfaces I tested, and is attributed to the high level of sound quality and low purchase price of the unit. The runner-ups are the SSL2, then the SSL12, and the Universal Audio Volt 4. This audio interface is cheap and it's crazy good. The sound quality of this unit is absolutely capable of a high-end professional studio. I've used Behringer gear quite a bit and they've got two different quality levels of their preamps. They've got their Xenix line, which is the lower quality, and I do not recommend using any of the Behringer stuff with the Xenix line of preamps. These preamps aren't very good. But then they've got their Midas designed preamps, and that's the preamps this interface uses, and most of their newer gear uses the Midas designed preamps. And these Midas designed preamps are really top notch. If you're running a professional studio and recording other people, this might not be the best choice. It's only got one headphone output, it's only got one set of monitoring outputs. So if you're running a professional studio, you might want something with a few more advanced features. So if you're not a pro studio, you just want to record yourself at home, you want to spend as little money as possible and get the best results possible. This is the audio interface I recommend. Introducing Jessica Lee. I recorded a portion of her song Test Run using several different interfaces to provide an example of the sound level that they can achieve. You can check out her original music on Spotify or any music streaming platform. For demonstration purposes, I used both a cheap mic, the ISK Vibrato, and an expensive mic, the Telefunken TF11 FET. All of the raw tracks to all the songs in this entire video can be downloaded at getbeautifulrecordings.com for your own critical listening as well as mix practice. So first up, we're going to listen to the Behringer UMC 204 HD. Test run In the middle of the night when the lights are dim And the stars won't shine and you can't find a place to rest your head on your test run When you want somebody I can't find somebody who'll love you the way I could the next audio interface I recommend is the SSL2. It's pretty standard, pretty straightforward. It doesn't really have anything fancy. It's got the little 4K button. I guess that's kind of fancy. It's nice. I like what it does. It gives a little bit of an airiness, a little bit of a boost to the high frequencies. It has a nice character and it's great for recording vocals, but that's not the reason I recommend this. The main thing I like about this is the sound quality. It is, well, I was going to say top notch, but it's the best. The SSL2 measured a preamp noise floor of 5.25 which is the best of all the audio interfaces I tested. This is an extremely low noise floor, and these preamps are easily suitable for applications that require high gain, such as low sensitivity microphones, or when recording very quiet sources. You can apply lots of gain without having a problematic noise floor. They also outperformed some expensive standalone preamps, such as the Universal Audio 4710D and the Art Pro MPA2. For features, it scored a three, receiving extra points for the 4K mode and for the front panel direct monitoring controls. And for value, it scored an 11.5.
which is number two on the list, just below the Behringer UMC 204 HD, and above the new SSL 12, Universal Audio Volt series, and the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. A lot of people have never heard of the brand name SSL, but they are well known within the community of audio professionals. SSL, which stands for Solid State Logic, their mixing boards are found in some of the world's most expensive studios. The preamps in this unit are the best of all the interfaces I tested, and they also outperform most of the expensive standalone preamps that you can get. The sound quality this unit is capable of is on par with the big expensive studios where cost is no object, they have tons of gear, but on an individual channel basis, not including like room acoustics and all the other features, just the sound quality of individual channels. The individual channels on this are just as good as the individual channels in the big multi-million dollar studios. If you're just recording yourself at home and you want the best of the best, regardless of the cost, but you're not recording other people, you're not recording live drums, two channels is enough for you, this is the audio interface that I would recommend. If you are recording other people, I would recommend stepping up to the SSL 2 Plus, which has two headphone outputs as well as a few other features. It's also a little bit more money, but it has the exact same sound quality as this, and it'll make it a little bit easier recording other people. If you need more than two channels, the SSL 12 was recently released. Again, same level of sound quality, but it's got four of these amazing preamps, and it's also got the ADAT inputs, which gives you an additional eight channels if you buy the external hardware that's needed to use that. So I'd recommend the SSL 12 if you need more than two channels at a time. Test run In the middle of the night when the lights are dim And the stars won't shine and you can't find a place to rest your head I'm your test run When you want somebody but can't find somebody who love you the way I could When you're my number And the last interface I'm going to recommend is the Universal Audio Volt 4. I'm going to recommend this for people who don't need to record more than four channels simultaneously because that's all it's capable of, and they want the cost no object, best of the best recordings. The Volt series measured a preamp noise floor of 6.2, which is low noise and comparable with many expensive standalone preamps, such as the Universal Audio 4710D, which is just slightly quieter, and the Seventh Circle Audio A12, which has a slightly higher noise floor. For features, the Volt 4 scored a 5 due to the vintage mode, dedicated line inputs, and additional outputs. And for value, it scored a 10.8, which is fourth on the list, just above the Volt 2, SSL 2 Plus, and Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. You can also get the 476, it just costs a little bit more, but you get the compressors. For me, those compressors are pretty useless because I can just instantiate a plug-in compressor in the DAW and it sounds almost identical, and I have more control over the parameters. So to me, those compressors aren't worth the extra money, but for some people they might be, especially if you're doing an application where you want to have the compressors in real time, such as live streaming or live sound. But for me personally, I would rather take the time afterwards in the DAW to tweak the compressor settings. The two preamps in this interface are outstanding, but what I really like about this and what separates it from the other audio interfaces is the two line inputs in the back. These are dedicated line inputs. They do not have a preamp attached to them. And for me personally, that adds a huge amount of value because I can use an external preamp with these line inputs and not have to route that signal through the built-in preamps. See, most of these audio interfaces have the combo inputs with the XLR for microphone, the quarter inch for line level, and then the quarter inch for high Z guitar inputs. Now a line level input has already been amplified, it doesn't need to go through a preamp. But what most of these audio interfaces do with these combo inputs is they take the line level input, reduce the volume of it, and then run that signal through the built-in preamp anyways. I like to use a camera lens as an analogy. I have this camera, but let's say I don't really like this lens, and I really like this lens, so I want to use this lens. Well, I could probably figure out a mounting solution to mount this lens over top of this lens so that the light passes through both of them. And that way I could say that I'm using the lens that I want but it completely defeats the purpose if the light still passes through this lens. Because the reason I want to use this lens isn't just because I like this lens, but it's also because I don't want to use this one. The whole idea of using a different lens is to use this one instead of this one. So that's why it's important to me to have dedicated line inputs. It's the same concept with an external preamp. If you're not able to bypass the internal preamp, then you're sending the signal through both the external preamp and the internal preamp, and that completely defeats the purpose of using an external preamp. 
A lot of people will use external preamps because they're expensive and they assume the external preamp will be better, but that's not always the case, and as a matter of fact, it's not usually the case. The internal preamps of most audio interfaces are extremely good and quite often even better than expensive external preamps. The downsides of the Volt 4 is it's only capable of four inputs simultaneously. It cannot be expanded or have more inputs. Even the Volt 476P, which has four channels of their preamps, all of those channels are forced to route through the internal preamps. Those preamps cannot be bypassed. So for me, the 476P is not suitable because I want to use my external preamps to their full potential. But yeah, if cost is no object and you want the best of the best, then I recommend the Universal Audio Volt 4 or Volt 476. Pair that with the Cranbourne Audio Camden EC2 preamp and you've got yourself one of the best recording chains money can buy. The main difference between the Volt 476 and the Volt 4 is that the Volt 476 has built-in analog compressors, which the Volt 4 does not have. Other than these compressors, they are sonically identical. In this recording, I used a Volt 476, but I did not use the built-in compressors, so sonically it's identical to the Volt 4. Drums were recorded with four channels, having the two overheads going into a Cranbourne Audio Camden EC2 and the kick and snare routed into the Volt's preamps. Guitars were recorded DI and reamped, and the bass was simply recorded DI. Vocals were recorded with both microphones using the Volt's built-in preamps. And several takes were done to compare the vintage mode and compressor settings, and you can analyze these different takes by downloading the tracks at getbeautifulrecordings.com. And if you're more than just an artist who wants to record themselves, you want to run a pro studio, you want to have multiple inputs and outputs and full control over everything, then the audio interface that I would recommend is the Metric Halo ULN8. This interface can be configured to have up to 48 inputs and outputs all simultaneously. The built-in preamps are really high quality. It's got onboard digital signal processing, so you can add reverb, delay, compression, and all those effects into the recording artist's headphone mix, and they'll hear everything in real time with no noticeable latency. This interface also has extremely flexible routing abilities. So within the software, you can create channel strips, and they can be assigned any input and any output, whether these inputs and outputs are physical, digital, or within the software realm. And you can also use auxiliary sends to create submixes. And if 48 inputs and outputs isn't enough for you, you can buy additional ULN8s or Leo 8s, and they can be daisy chained together. This is my personal setup in my studio, and I love it. They've also got the expansion cards in the back to give you more analog or digital inputs, so it can be customized towards your own individual needs. And Metric Halo has gone above and beyond in future-proofing their audio interfaces. Every time they've made improvements to their hardware and released the next generation of their interfaces, they've made an upgrade kit available to existing owners to upgrade their audio interface to the latest and greatest hardware at a much lower cost than simply buying a new one and throwing out or selling the old one. And their customer service is great. If you have any questions or issues, you just send them an email and their guy John will reply to you within a day or two. One of the audio interfaces I see a lot of people buying, and it's probably not the right one for them and their needs, is the Universal Audio Apollo Twin. This is a two-channel recording interface with 8 ad expansion, so it's capable of 10 channels in total. It's excellent quality, but it's also very expensive. And I think one of the reasons a lot of people are buying this interface is because it's so expensive, they're expecting it to be so much better than the other audio interfaces. But it's not. The reason it's so expensive is because of the onboard DSP processing. If you don't know what DSP processing is, you probably don't need it, but I'm going to explain it a little bit anyways, because this DSP processing makes up the bulk of the expense of this unit. You're paying mostly for DSP processing and then a little bit for the audio interface component. What the onboard DSP processing does is it offloads some of the processing from the computer onto the interface to help the computer keep up in some high demand sessions. So if you're running a huge session with hundreds of plugins and your computer can barely keep up, then it might be beneficial to have an external device to help process some of those plugins. It's kind of like a graphics card for gamers, where the computer graphics just aren't quite powerful enough to keep up with the high graphics demands of modern video games. So you can get a graphics card and that helps process the graphics. Well, within audio, you can get, I guess we'll call it an audio card in this video, 
It's a DSP processor, which stands for Digital Signal Processing, and it offloads some of the processing of the plugins onto the audio interface. So if you're not running huge sessions and your computer is keeping up with your projects just fine, then you don't need this. It's not going to give you better sound quality or anything. So if you're not running really big sessions and your computer is keeping up just fine, then really the only thing you get for the extra price of this interface is the ability to get reverb in your headphone mix. So if that's important enough to you that it's worth the extra price, then maybe this is the right interface for you. There are other options to get reverb in your headphone mix in real time, such as a hardware reverb unit. You can get an old Lexicon hardware reverb unit for like a hundred bucks used if you look around. But the main point that I wanted to make is that the Apollo Twin, even though it's much more expensive than the other audio interfaces here, it's not necessarily any better. And I want to talk a little bit about the worst audio interface on the market right now. It's the Steinberg UR22C. The features and functionality are very similar to the Behringer UMC204 HD, except the price is almost twice as much and the quality is much lower. The preamps in this are really noisy and they are not capable of a professional level of sound quality. The Steinberg UR22C measured a preamp noise floor of 11.6. These preamps are fairly noisy and not suitable for high gain applications such as ribbon microphones or recording quieter sources. It received a feature score of 2, which is below average, however, it is just a very basic recording interface. And for value, it scored a 3.2, which is the worst value interface I had tested. This low value score is due to the fairly noisy preamps the lack of features, and the rather high purchase price. If you want to take your time looking at these graphs, go to getbeautifulrecordings.com. Also, if you want to join the community, go to the Facebook group called Get Beautiful Recordings. I hope to see you there. And also check out my other videos. I'm working on an entire audio engineering course. A lot of the videos are already there to help you learn about audio engineering and the things you need to know to get pro-level recordings at home. So hit subscribe right down there and check out the other videos in my channel. I'll see you later.